it's party time. So pour your whole voice in your crazy cousins. We came here to eat. We're not leaving until we're stuffed. And there'll be nothing left, nothing safe, not even a crust. All aboard for a fat boy trip, and you can call me Captain. Don't forget the paper plates and the stack of nap. holiday season, a tinge of uh, orange peel, cinnamon, and gingerbread. That's lovely. Where did you, you get that at Walgreens? Well, welcome to Joey Royale's Pizza Party, a celebration of all things Goodman Games, Dungeon Crawl Classics, Mutant Crawl Classics, and all the wonderful third-party stuff that the Dark Master, Mr. Joseph Goodman, puts out. Woo! Every time I open this book, I find something new. Right before the show started, right before I got on, I opened to a random page, and it struck me. I was doing an early wisdom check. Page 383, right out of the bat. Death Rose. Listen to this. Listen to this. This is going to be on the tombstone. Extraordinary creatures can remain extraordinary in death. Woo! Uh, you just wait. I'm coming back for all of you. I'm going to be watching you. So, how you been? We got an awesome show tonight. We got the crew. The whole family is here to celebrate the holidays. We got the Neon Lord. We got Dr. Metal. We got Luscious Levi. We got Elena on the ones and twos. And we got, oh, I got a friend. I met a friend last year. Oh, I met him at Gen Con. We've talked. I love this guy. He's a kindred spirit. He comes on. The Zoom goes on. Boom. I see his, his cool room. What a mozzarella mausoleum he's got. We're going to talk about all sorts of weird stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Judge Tim Snyder. The Snyder Man will be with us tonight on Joey Royale's Pizza Party. We got a lot to talk about, so let's transition into the Crypt of Cool. Well, let's take a look. I got so much great stuff here. And it's all over. Ah, let's start with this. A little something for the ears this holiday. Mr. Tim Deshen, Sensei Tim, one of my best friends, sent me a wonderful gift for my birthday in the mail. And if you have not listened to this album, ah, you got to jump on and listen to it. Even the Neon Lord, I think this will suit his palate. He's a, you know, he's a, he is very distinct in his taste, but I think this scratches the itch of both the Neon Lord, Luscious Levi, and, uh, uh, Dr. Metal. This is Warm Doucher at the hot spot. This right here, oh, it's it'll make you move. It's loud. It's greasy. These guys are complete scumbags, and I love them. Wait till you listen to Warm Doucher. W-A-R-M-D-U-S-H-E-R. Great, great stuff. You know, I started thinking a lot when we were talking about like uh, wizard soundtracks and a lot of people said some great stuff about, well, what would be the soundtrack for a thief? What would be the soundtrack for a warrior? And since then I'm approaching my characters differently. Like instead of always going for the metal that I've always have some other kind of things in mind, some other tunes um, I think would be really cool to get my, my juices going when I'm building a character. What else do I got? Oh, my own. All right. We'll talk about this with the rest of the guys, but we ended up, at PAX Unplugged in Philadelphia, I had an absolute blast. While I was down there, I got to meet some of my friends from Spaghetti Land, including the Bug Professor. How you doing, Bug Professor, if you're out there? A real-life entomologist, all right? He studies bugs for a living. And he passed this off to me, and it was one of the greatest gifts, and I'm blown away by how awesome this is. He's going to be on one of the next... Uh, pizza parties to talk about it but just to wet your palate he made a dinosaurs attack dcc funnel wow can you believe it this thing is incredible now you all know my love for tops trading cards garbage pail kids mars attacks 
dinosaurs attacks. But man, he has gone through all of the cards and he has come up with plot lines, some narrative stuff to read out loud, a whole bunch of locations based on the cards. He's got pure breed dinosaurs. He's got what other charts he's got here. He's got auto uh, um automobile rules, gunfire rules, dinosaur hit dice crit table. My own! This guy got it all. So amazing. I can't believe this. Uh, I even got he even ge generated zero level characters. New Wave Punk, Band Kid, National Guardsman from New Jersey. All right, Eagle Scout. We got to do this sometime. All right, we I got to talk to the Neon Lord. We got to stream this. That's a beautiful. Uh, what else I got? Oh man, here we go. Goodman Games adjacent. My buddy Stu. All right, I got two good friends, Hambone and Stu, talking about New Jersey. Stu, both of Vintage RPG podcast, an absolutely wonderful podcast. I love him very much. Maron. Monsters, aliens, and holes in the ground. Look at this. An encyclopedia of the history of role-playing games. Oh, my God. Ladies and gentlemen, hold the press. Very Something very important just snuck in here for my Crypt of Cool. Ladies and gentlemen, come here, buddy. Oh, thank you, hon. Look at this. Crypt of Cool. I got a new player for the table. This is Vincenzo Royale. How you doing? He just showed up yesterday. All right? They were going to kill this poor little guy. We got him. He was abandoned in Texas. We picked him up out in Cape Cod, and now he's part of the Royale family. All right? Say hi, Vincenzo. Hi, Vincenzo. Ah, you wise guy. There you go. So, if you got extra room at your house, take in a little pup. Adopt one. There's so many of them that need a home that they're going to put to death if you don't. Who could do that to that guy? So if you can adopt an animal, there's a lot of animals that need love. Anyway, bye, buddy. Just had to share that with all my friends. Monsters, aliens, and holes in the ground. From the most obscure to the ones we all know and love. Oh, oh, I just went past it. Of course, DCC is in here. Got a nice chapter on DCC. But I am learning so much. This reads like a beautiful, like, you know, it does not read like an encyclopedia. Stu's writing is beautiful. Just came out. Monsters, Aliens, and Holes in the Ground, a guide to tabletop role-playing games from D&D &D to Mothership. Beautiful piece of work there. Nice job, Stu. And then, of course, Luscious is coming on in a bit, but he gave me a beautiful book, an absolutely beautiful book I have not been able to put down as well. Vampires, Zombies, and Monster Men, and Monsters and Mythic Beasts. Two books in one, and it's got that classic elementary school photo filter over it. It runs the gamut from the Kraken to Giants. Listen, I'm telling you, you cannot go wrong when you get these old school cryptozoology books. Look at that. Look at all the inspiration on one page. My own. Thanks, Luscious. And Luscious, I just got this in the mail. Oh, my own. Look, it even comes with the puke bag. Occurrence at Howling Crater, Planet X Games, always quality. Oh, my God. Levi Combs and Jeff Cypher, compatible with DCC and MCC. Look at that mug right there. Oh, ah, that's me after a bottle of Night Train. All right. You got to check that out. Pick that up. And Levi will be on to talk about he and Lou's Kickstarter as well. Let's go into, oh, and if, listen, you want a nice uh, holiday gift? I can't show it because it's, uh, it's a treat for somebody who's upstairs. I'll just say this. Bradley McDevitt's Etsy shop is back open. You can get all sorts of original stuff from uh, Original Adventures and Revised. And it's got DCC. It's got DCC stuff. This is the Darkest Dice piece. I've been picking those up cheap, 20 to $50. This guy's giving this stuff away. Help out Brad and Jess. They got good stuff going on. And now it's time for our wisdom check. <laughs> wisdom check. Sponsored by Plantation Blackstrap Molasses. Let's get that going. I'm not feeling good. Everybody, how you doing at home? Eat a lot of soup. It's that time of season. I got to get ready for Tim Snyder, too, because I'm sure he likes the Blackstrap down there in uh, the meat crawl. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. That tastes like the holidays, doesn't it? It's good for your mustache. All right. There you go. Enough of that. Let's dig in deep. I got oh, I got some beautiful stuff today. All right. Changing things up a little bit. I told you I've been reading this book, The Power of Myth by Joseph Candle. Listen to this. He's going back and forth. This is a, this whole book is an interview. So the guy says to Campbell, how do I slay the dragon in me? What's the journey each of us has to make? What you call the soul's high adventure? Hmm? And Campbell responds, my general formula for my students is follow your bliss. Find where it is and don't be afraid to follow it. Yeah, that sounds right. So the guy says to him, is it my work or my life? This is where it gets good. Is it my work or my life? Campbell says, if the work that you're doing is the work that you chose to do because you are enjoying it, that's it. But if you think, oh, no, I couldn't do that. That's the dragon locking you in. No, no, I couldn't be a writer. Or no, no, I couldn't possibly do what so-and-so is doing. The guy says, in this sense, unlike heroes such as Prometheus or Jesus, we're not going on our journey to save the world, but to save ourselves, Campbell says. But in doing that, you save the world. In saving yourself, you save the world. The influence of a vital person vitalizes. There's no doubt about it. The world without spirit is a wasteland. People have the notion of saving the world by shifting things around, changing the rules, and who's on top and so forth. No, no. Any world is a valid world if it's alive. The thing to do is to bring it, bring life to it. And the only way to do that is to find your own case where the life is and become alive yourself. We need you and we need you to do stuff because it vitalizes the world. Are you pondering existence or are you just existing? You have a great idea? Good. Do something with it because it's awesome. And somebody, I guarantee you, somebody will like it. And then we go to Mr. Rick Rubin, and he matches this nicely as we expand out and we think about others. The synergy of a group is as important, if not more important, than the talent of the individuals. What a group we have. The Dungeon Crawl Classics community, the Goodman Games community, is something very different, and what we have is very, very special, especially in times like we're living in right now. Do not give up hope and know that the DCC community, whoever you are, however you have chosen to live your life, accepts you and loves you, and you are always welcome at my table and all the rest of my friends' tables in the DCC world. OK, let's look at the card of the day. We call upon the spirit of what and Mercado. I pulled a fresh garbage pail kid tarot card right before the show began. And I said, Walter, what do I need to tell all my amigos in spaghetti land? And Walter replied with the upside down eight of wands. You see hot rod in his stroller right there. OK, upside down when reversed. It's not always bad. Just ponder this. The momentum represented by the upright eight of wands is blocked. You've stalled. Often this card shows that you're one hitting the brakes and standing in the way of your own progress. Change can make you apprehensive, but that's natural. But delaying this process is only dragging it out more. It's time to let go of your reservations and embrace a new pace. Do something. Don't wait till New Year's. Where you're going to say, oh, I'm going to do, no, no, no. Get a head start and beat all those knuckleheads. Get a good idea together for Zine Quest. All right, that's coming up. You got a DCC or MCC Zine project you're working on? Do it, and I'll have you on the show. All of you. We'll do like a speed dating thing, and I'll have anybody that's interested in promoting their Zine for Zine Quest. We'll do one whole Joey Royale's Pizza Party just about that. I'll get you on there. You get a couple minutes, and we'll talk about funny stuff. And uh, we'll throw a couple bucks your way. How does that sound? Okay? Very good. Here's my promise. Joey Royale will take at least a 1,000 people 
on that night. If there's a thousand people, we'll have you all on and I'll contribute at least one dollar to each of your projects. And I guarantee, I guarantee I'll probably do a little bit more. But I want to see more third party zines for Goodman Games. We got great momentum. So let's keep it going. OK, good. All right. Uh, hey, one more personal thing here. So I'm working on a little project and uh, I send Mr. Mike Curtis, a mentor, somebody I, I really respect. I needed some advice. All right. I was working on a couple of monsters and I hit a wall. All right. And I'm, I'm thinking about word count. I have an allowance for word count. And I write Michael. I said, Michael, I'm stuck at this word count. Is that OK or do I need to fulfill it? Instead of saying yes or no, here's what this genius says to me. If you're happy with them, submit them at their current length. If you see where they could be improved with a little more love, then use the word count to do so. On the surface, I had to read it a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that makes sense. But then it hit me. What if I added a little bit more love to these things I was working on? Rather than I got it, you know, you started with the inspiration. And then it's an assignment. You got a word count and a deadline and things start to change a little bit. I'm experiencing this for the first time. The love. That's what was missing. The love. I had a great idea. I loved it. But then I got, you know, you work on it over and over again. You're saying it the same thing. And I lost the love. And it was a very simple idea, Michael, put in my head. Do I love it? Does it look like I love this thing? Is there love baked into it? Or are these just some words that I wrote down on paper because I saw something cool in a movie? And I started to think about how much I love these things because they came from my head and nobody else made these. All right. You have these seeds in your head too. sprinkle them with a little bit of love. Yeah. There's always going to be deadlines and word counts, but if you don't sprinkle the love in there, they're nothing. They're cardboard junk that they'll just be thrown away and they'll use somebody else's good stuff. Sprinkle a little love on the things that come out of your head. They deserve it. Okay. That's enough out of me. Elena, let's bring in the guys. Dun, da, 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 da. Ladies and gentlemen, all the way from the Pine Barrens of New Jersey, the dark depths of the swamps, we got the Neon Lord, we got Luscious Levi, and we got Santa Metal with us today. How you doing, guys? How's it Fantastic. going, Joey? Ooh, ho, ho, all right, all ho. right, all right. Hey, yo, oh, yo. Oh. Hey, look, everybody's festive. We got the, we got a little, what do you got, a little hot butted rum there, Santa Metal? What do you got going on? It's a little good for Cures What Ails You. You got a little RSV? This is yeah. Good Hanging out with Odorous. RSV. I got the RSV. It's I'm down and out, but I had to show up tonight. All got right. Me. Neon Lord, what's going hey. on over there? Oh, you know, same old stuff. It's it's uh December. It's the show. I gotta talk about a French movie that I Let's talk go. about every year. You Let's knew it was go. gonna happen. I got Deadly Games, aka Dial Code Santa Claus. Yeah, the greatest Home Alone movie that ever existed. Came out a year before Home Alone. It's better. It's the best movie ever made. I highly recommend everybody watch it. Listen, he sold me on it. I watched it. It's amazing. It's it, it came out before Home Alone, right? A year before Home Alone, yep. yeah. And I still love Home Alone, but... You know, I, love, I love Home Alone, but this is the original Home Alone, a much yeah. more violent, trap-laden Home Alone. Definitely yeah. got some great creativity in there. A lot Definitely. of good influences. Definitely more violent, yeah. That is good, good to put out there. So you're watching that with the kids. That's good. Oh, oh speaking of violent, so I thought about, because we were talking about what we're going to talk about, yes. best... best uh, Christmas themed horror movie, right? Oh, okay. Whoa. I like this. So I went with my favorite, Silent Night, Deadly Night, like the greatest, Great greatest yeah. cover ever made. Absolutely, like, no you doubt about gotta it. Gotta have more than one copy, you know? Like, oh, my you got all the Silent Night. But the weird thing is about the collection, I don't have number two. It goes three, four, five, and one. Two so you don't good. get it. Two is good. Who might got, be my favorite? Garbage day. Yeah, my favorite <laughs> quote of like all time. No, <laughs> Troll Two's got way better. Okay, well, I never saw part two. Oh, you, you gotta watch part two. To check that out. So I don't know if they had. I know last year, uh, Shutter had all of them, 
Okay. I don't know if they do this year. They, whoa, they whoa, whoa. Might. What do you mean by all of them? Like all the Silent Night Deadly Nights, all five of them. All five? Oh. <laughs> own. You never seen number five? No, I'm, why would be, I'm surprised people haven't shut their chimneys by that point. Do we uh, need to see one, two, or excuse me, one, three, <laughs> and four? Not two, one, three, and four. But I don't know why two. Five. I don't know why two wasn't on this. It was like <laughs> I had to buy it anyway. But like, yeah, two doesn't show up. I want to say, Clint Clint Howard's in in uh, five. Uh, He's in one. Good old Clint. Yeah, top character actor, right? Ice Cream Man. Yeah. This guy's fantastic. You, you should do a holiday calendar. I'd love to have him up on the wall. That'd be awesome. <laughs> He's a very cool guy. Yeah, I bet he is. All right, yeah. thank you for those. Yeah, and of course. Burp Runners. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Burp, go ahead. I, uh, I keep uh, running Rider, the title. Riders of the Burp Warp. Riders of the Burp Warp. You're sending hey, out a yeah. lot of updates. You're working very hard on that, buddy. Oh, yeah. They will be That's available be the in the new... Goodman store. What'd you say? They will be available in the Goodman store. All right, we got two new Neon Lords of the Toxic Wasteland module uh, supplements coming out. Riders of no, yes, Riders of the Burp Warp, warp Shine. No, burp no, no. Warp. <laughs> Riders warp of the Shine Burp Warp Runner. is like twelve to fourteen new classes, and then uh, Warp Shine Runners is a Hicks Crawl adventure through like a uh, it's like thirty seven different locations in a like an abandoned mining facility. Oh, oh nice, perfect. And I, I, can't I mean, it's like perfect match. You and Tim Snyder, peanut butter and orange juice right there. It's going to be yeah, perfect. I mean, but it's not like an abandoned mining. It's like, oh, what you would expect. There's like a haunted haunted mansion. There's yep. like a hayride from hell in it. There's like a, it's Frankie Fang's fun time fiasco is a Chuck E. Cheese vampire clan that lives oh. in like a, from dusk till dawn bar on an island. <laughs> like, Boy, you're speaking <laughs> to my, my poison heart right there. Yeah, I know, I know. And I was explaining it to you at PAX. You were just like, uh, couldn't believe the ridiculousness. And saying it out loud, it was like, yeah, this is a little bit too the much. Depth, the depth of your creations are, are second to none, my friend. Oh, I appreciate it. Luscious Levi, what have you brought from the museum today? Ah, so a little a festive uh, Christmas spirit, but I brought a uh, a Russian nesting doll. Mm. This is uh, this is Baba Yaga. Oh, uh, yeah, oh, yeah so exactly. Nice. So you got to, if you look at that, you can see. Uh, uh, oops, Baba Yaga there. With I, I, you can see where I've t I've taped the uh, I've taped the the broom back on. But again, it's a nesting doll, so you you if I can even get it open. But you pop it open, and inside. There is a chicken-footed little hut, just like oh, in uh, just like in D and D, right? Yeah. So you get that, and then you open that up, and there is a golden egg inside. Wow! So then the gold, this little tiny golden egg, you can still you can open that up, and inside there, for whatever reason, there is a tiny needle and thread. I don't know if you can see that or not. Interesting. Yeah, so I, I got this when I was living in Alaska. There was a little, uh, just a little like Russian kiosk, you know, place that sold nesting dolls, and I'd always go in there asking if they had, "Hey, do you have anything for uh, Baba Yaga?" And the lady, or this Russian lady, she was like, "No, no, no, Baba Yaga." I said, Yaga. I was like, oh, okay. Oh, there we go. You know. So yeah, so I got that, and it's just been one of my favorite little things there in the in the cabinet of curiosities ever since. I just think it's so cool. Thanks it's for so, sharing uh, that. That's really cool. That's it's it's a good one, man. So she's just flying around in her little uh, mortar and pestle, and uh, it looks like she's clutching uh, I don't know, some sort of like red, maybe bloody object in her hand. So it's a child. A it was a child. Yeah. Yeah. Right. She's got a she's got a cat in there. Yeah. Um, it's very cool. You can very even see cool. like got a little wart there in the chin, but yeah, very cool. That's Levi, what? you want to give a uh, a little uh, intro to you and Lou's project that you have on Kickstarter right now? As I sip on my Baja Blast. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's called uh, Assault from Witchgate Thirteen. It's uh, myself, Lou Alou from Dandelion Games. Uh, we've come up with this crazy reverse prison break adventure that yes. takes place literally at the spine of the world, way up north, um, and uh, it's for level four characters. And it basically revolves around this, <clears throat> this mysterious, 
prison in the wastes where uh, the unlucky are consigned and the a, a coterie, a, a coven of hags oversees the whole operation. But, you know, there's a, there's a mystery. There's stuff going on there. There's a lot of dangerous landscapes and fantastic places to explore. And Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so you just you get wound up in the adventure, and you have to do a, a re, instead of breaking out of the prison, it's a reverse prison break. You're breaking into the prison. Breaking into um, the prison. Yeah, yeah. It's um, you know, Lou Lou came up with this fantastic um, adventure, and then uh, Jeff Seifert and I we're we're, we're just contributing writers. Uh, but this is Lou's baby. He he really just pulled out all the stops. We love Lou, don't we? He's such a great soul. Um, I actually have it queued up for uh, afterwards. Uh, I'm going to go upstairs, have some pasta for Zul, and watch Escape from Precinct 13 tonight in preparation there for that. So go. I have pledged. I am ready to go, and I have not seen Escape from Precinct 13 yet. Um, so Assault on Precinct 13. I'm sorry, Assault. Excuse the, me. The original or the, or the later one? Hopefully he's talking original. Yeah, John Carpenter. Oh, original. Oh, come on. Okay. Original. Original. The newer what's the one other one? Wasn't that bad, but it's a remake. Yeah, yeah. What's the What's the one I told you I watched last night? That was a hoop. Uh, yeah, that was a um, uh, oh, who made, who directed it? It was uh, Matteo. Yeah, Bruno Matteo. What was it? What was it? Uh, I'm looking it up. I forgot. What yeah, yeah, yeah. Said. Look up. That was a great hey. one. So, Another one like that. All right. Good job, Levi, and good job, Lou. Uh, check it out right now. Elena put the link in the chat, so click on that and give him your money, you knucklehead. <laughs> Santa Metal, you got odorous with you. What are you doing over there? We're trimming the tree, and, uh, you know, these guys like to trim a lot of stuff, so um, hopefully the walls will stay white, but if you've ever been to a show with them, you know that's not going to last. Well, um, if it's white, they're going to they're gonna try snorting the walls, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so I got too. a question for Levi, <laughs> and maybe maybe we need Lou for this. If it's Witchgate 13, it begs the question, what happened to Witchgates 1 through 12? And a second question to that, sure. much like the Silent Night, Deadly Night series, do they acknowledge Witchgate 2? <laughs> <laughs> Is there um, a... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, which game 13 is uh, the 13 is actually for the mysterious 13th prisoner. Oh, uh, there's a there's a, 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 a mystery prisoner there at the at, at the prison uh, that uh, players will will stumble upon uh, that is very crucial to the plot. But there, there are no which gates one through uh, one through 12. But uh, hey, what if there was what a ride? Is yeah. there a who's on first and what's on second joke? Like, which <laughs> gate? Which gate are we talking about? This <laughs> gate. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. That's great. I, love I, mean, it. I never thought about it until I heard Ben say which gate for some reason. Hey, well, there wasn't, but maybe there is now. Who knows? Yeah. That is why we're friends. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Hey, All right. uh, Santa Metal, what's it like over at the Santa Metal House on on the holidays on Christmas? Um, pretty good, pretty quiet. Uh, the the uh, the Mrs. Metal and uh, the the little metals. We just went to the La Salette Shrine, uh, which is a big Rhode Island thing. Uh, a lot of lights at a church, and they have an old here that you would love. And they are famous for French meat pies. Ooh. It's like a pot pie with nothing but meat in it and some kind of special flavoring. The lady right. asked me, she goes, I go, uh, the kids are like chicken fingers, chicken fingers. I'm like, I'm having, <laughs> give me two pieces. She goes, same plate. Yeah. Cause I'm not sharing. Yeah. Would you like gravy, sir? Would I? Oh, uh, duh. <laughs> All the gravy. So if I, if I uh, fall asleep here in the chair or go into some kind of coma, blame the French and their mystical meat pies. But, the uh, French so, mystical meat pies. But that well, was the activity for the night. Um, that is a perfect segue <laughs> to the meat pies. Are <laughs> a perfect segue, my friends. You guys are just perfect. We don't even plan this. For this evening, let me just do my little ceremonial spritz. Ah, that's good. I love that. Old Spice, that's nice, huh? Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to introduce to you, you just finished some uh, meatballs upstairs with Nona, Mr. Tim Snyder, Judge Snyderman himself, my friend and inspiration. Welcome to the show, Mr. Snyder. How are you, buddy? 
I am doing just fine, Joey. Hey, thanks a lot for having me, guys. It's my pleasure. You got we got a lot to talk about. I could do like three shows with you on. Uh, but we and we had some great all the guys in Elena had some great conversation before the show. So I'm gonna try to get through some of this. You got the whole rest of the show, and guys, jump in if you got questions for this awesome man because we have a lot of shared experiences. I just got these in the mail yesterday from the Etsy. Ha ha, I got the last three copies. Uh, you got to be quick. But I would like to introduce to you or reintroduce you to Tim Snyder's Country Meat Grinder Classics. This speaks to me. <laughs> all right? I'm an old-time banjo player. All right? This, is, this speaks to me. I'm a big fan of the Hills Devise. I'm a Top. big fan of TCM. You are truly a monster kid at heart. It just shines right through you. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing just fine, Joy. I'm I, I'm flattered. I'm I'm glad that you that you like my my little soirees into the exploitation genre. Like um, it? I love it. Wonderful stuff. I read fantastic. through all of these yesterday. Well, cool. And this is like this is class, man. This is class. You treated this well. You have a very nice prose. And reading this just as a piece of literature, that's how I really trust the value of a, of a game. First of all, can you play it? Absolutely. But do I enjoy reading it just as a piece of literature? And I do. I, it's like Marzio. I can just read his stuff like I'm reading a book. You, you have that same kind of style in terms of the way I can digest this for pleasure and not just for gaming. So let's start with the boring question you probably got asked a million times. You you come you got you do a lot of beautiful mutant crawl classic stuff. You got the post apocalyptic action behind you, but then you, you jump into the the backwoods. How did that happen, Tim? Uh, well, I, I'll be honest with you. the The title alone kind of tells you where the yeah. inspiration kind of came from. Um, yep. Country is from uh, Country Crawl Classics, which was that ash can that came out uh, yes. some time ago. Uh, Meat is from Meat Planet, which is uh, from the Hobo Namicon. Yep. Uh, that uh, Kovacs put out. Yeah. Grinder is from the Arwich Grinder, which came from the uh, uh, Crawl series. Yeah, Daniel. Yeah. So, uh, so literally, those three uh, just were kind of percolating in the head and all that stuff. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the Shutter Mountains. Uh, yeah. And so, literally, you had this and you had that, you had that. And I won't say that I was like watching motel hell or anything yeah, on TV sure, sure. and it suddenly popped in. Um, but I started uh, just kind of noodling around with the idea of, uh, of the Helsin Horror, which I think was the first one. Uh, and because I just wanted, I wanted the giant monster pig eating people. Of course. Of course. Why, why, why wouldn't you? Uh, yep. And so I was like, well, obviously that's got to happen in the back. And obviously that's going to be fairly gruesome. Uh, and then I came up with the idea of like a country general store yeah. uh, being overrun. And then these two geezers uh, who appear on the back of each one yeah. uh, by, the, by the name of Zeke and Abner. And they just kind of introduce each one. And they actually figure uh, a part in the third one. So literally it just kind of that first one just kind of came together as like an homage to like the 1970s. We sold our souls and, and now bless you. Uh, and now it's coming back to, to haunt them. And so uh, Hells and Horror, I think I released uh, like around Halloween two years ago. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, then Halloween that's, that's started. With the that's day. the one. Uh, and then, uh, you know, Halloween started to kind of crawl up again. Uh, and I was like, you know what? Uh, I would really like to write uh, a zombie apocalypse uh, uh, adventure. Uh okay, why don't I place that in the country? So how would that kind of happen? And that's when I came up with the idea of behind the Doom Brewer, who is like a moonshine, a moonshiner uh, who uses, uh, by accident, some poisoned corn. Uh, and the, uh, the Doom Shine uh, actually will uh, kill the imbiber as well as allow them to be controlled by uh, the Doom Shiner. So that became my, uh, my zombie apocalypse. Yeah. In the in the backwoods. That's the um, first one I read. That was great. It kind of reminds me, like uh, Neon Lord. We talked about this before. Toxic zombies. Yeah, redneck mm -hmm. zombies. Or, redneck red, zombies, where yeah, they spray the, the government sprays the dope and they all turn into zombies. Yep. That's no, no, no. It's the they use the toxic barrel as their uh, 
they make the moonshine in the toxic oh, barrel. No, so it's a different movie. Toxic Zombies is the one with the with the with the dope, right? Or is that Rednecks? One of them they spray the dope and the guys go crazy. The hippies go crazy. That's uh like isn't that like I drink your blood? No, 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 no. I saw it on Commander USA's Groovy Movies. <laughs> oh, so you <laughs> say toxic? For me. I am. All I'm, right, I'm pulling it up for you. I love them, Tim. They're beautiful books. Thank you very much. Are you uh, reprinting and, them? Uh, yes, uh, sort of, kind of. Uh, they're all available. I mean, you've got the the, the hand created uh, okay. using these these well worn uh, uh, monk like uh, hand uh, hand hand tossed would probably yes. be something yes. that you would know a little bit in your uh, in your neck of the woods. Yes. Uh, and so that's the ones I I created. Um, there is a handful that is now uh, winging its way to Goodman Games, so they'll be Perfect. on their storefront soon. Okay. Uh, and those who want to just go to like uh, drive uh, drive through RPG, uh, you can order both PDFs and these incredibly boring, basic black and white, uh, soulless versions. Um, but uh, but they got a glued spine rather than the staple, so you you know less chance of getting tetanus. There's nothing boring about those. It's, it's, it's easier. It's easier to show the blood splatter from the uh, from what will happen to the characters with that white. I might just have to do that for the next issue. Those were the first two that I got were the white ones, and and as simple as it is, it feels with the cover and that font, it feels authentic and mm -hmm. it's right. I feel like I got it on the shelf at the Cracker Barrel or something. <laughs> El Dente. I, nice. Um, I, I, would, I have to do a, a shout out to the artist who, who's done all the art for it, uh, which is uh, Aaron Seidel. Uh, and he, he's done a lot of the black, he did the, all the black and white artwork for mm -hmm. that. He's also done the covers for some of my uh, yeah. uh, uh, MCC adventures. But I, I, I thought he just kind of hit it out of the park each time. So that's something but, else I want to talk to you about. Because there's something on Levi's screen that is uh, rang a bell with me. You, uh, so you are very prolific in the MCC world. Uh, I want to ask you about a Crash of the Titans. But before we get to that, I want to ask you about When Manimals Attack. I saw that and it completely ripped the brain out of my skull. <laughs> because I saw the cover art and I said, boy, this looks familiar. This is beautiful. And it still remains one of my favorite pieces of like DCC MCC related art. But I'm looking at Levi's background and I see that the artist is also represented on his wall. You got Ken Kelly to do the art, rest in peace, to uh, When Manimals Attack. And right back there, Levi just pointed to one of my favorite uh, pieces of toy art of all time, Manglore Mountain. Uh, how, how did that come about, Tim? I I will tell you that I, I had very little to do with it. Uh, when Manimals Attack was the first thing that I wrote for MCC, I was already yep. doing uh, a lot of editing uh, for their lines because uh, that's okay. kind of, that's my nine to five job. Uh, and Mike knew that uh, uh, Mike Curtis knew that I was writing stuff for other uh, company lines and my own stuff. Uh, so what happened is that Ken Kelly approached uh, Joe Goodman with that piece of art. Uh, and just said, you know, look, I put this together. Um, if you guys would like to use it, you know, I'd be I'd be happy to uh, make arrangements. So Mike got a hold of me uh, and showed me that piece of artwork and said, if you can write an adventure with this guy as an inspiration, uh, we'll we'll bring you aboard. So I I pitched a couple of ideas and uh, he he liked what I had to offer and I wrote it up and so. Uh, literally, uh, I think that might have been one of the last uh, pieces of Ken Kelly's artwork. Uh, to before appear. he passed away, yeah, yeah, before he before he passed away. So it was uh, it was a genuine uh, uh, pleasure and honor, and kind of a shock because it's like, hey, Tim, here's a piece of artwork done by this guy who you've been seeing for years and years and and forever. How would you like your first Goodman Games adventure to have? this classic guy's artwork on the cover. And I was like, Man. yeah. Oh, uh, that's a testament so, to how much they trusted you as a, as an artist and a writer. Yeah. So, yeah. It was, it was really nice. And, and of course, you know, that got my foot in the door and yeah, uh, I've written a, a, a few things. I so, very nice. Always reminded me of battle beasts. Yes. Ah, yeah. Wow. Yep. That's a, that's a reference. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, so I thought, that's what I thought it was when I first saw it. 
Now, yeah. I was uh, I also looked. I hadn't heard of this one before, but I'm really interested in this. Tell me about Crash of the Titans. First of all, I love the name. That's hilarious. But there's something to do with cardboard standees and stuff. Tell me about this. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, Crash of the Titans was uh, the uh, Mutant Crawl classic adventure I wrote for uh, DCC Day this year. Yeah. Uh, and uh, same kind of thing. They were produced. They had produced the uh, the uh, the new rule book that was coming out with that piece of artwork. Uh, and once again, I, that seems to be my ballywick. Hey, yeah. here's a neat piece of artwork. What do you think? Sure. Uh, and I had already wanted to write a kaiju adventure. Yeah. Uh, so uh, when I saw that, I was like, okay, well, there's two huge kaiju. Let's say that the adventurer, they're not there to fight these things. They're there to just avoid getting stomped on. Uh, so the adventure is, I wrote, initially wrote the adventure of them exploring the city while the kaiju moved from location to location. The adventure was already put together, it was in layout. Uh, and then I had an idea um, that uh, sometimes like uh, uh, some of the, uh, all the magazines back in the 80s, they would put like a game uh, inside where you could like tear out the, uh, the board yeah. and cut out the little figures and stuff like that. And I remember, oh yeah, you'd fold it here, here. And make a little triangle and stuff. So I sketched up a, a quick sketch and said, "Hey, Mike, this would be kind of neat if you're if you have like a, a piece of white space and you're just looking for artwork. Uh, you know, why don't you have like a couple of these little standees, uh, and then you know that way they could like draw the map out and, and move a little standees. That would be kind of a, a neat visual. And yeah. I had kind of done something like that during playtesting. Uh, and Mike loved the idea." went to Joe Goodman, came back to me and said, we're going to do you one better. Uh, we're actually going to take your map that was already in black and white laid out. They then made it in color. They put it on a detachable uh, cover, on the inside cover, along with little uh, cardboard cutouts that you could either download from the website or use. Uh, and he says, you know, we're actually going to turn that into the, the very board game thing that you awesome. kind of envisioned. I was just pitching like a little piece of artwork uh, and they, they turned it into just this glorious color map of the of the overhead uh, with the uh, with the two uh, titans that are moving around. Um, and it, it made it uh, visually just just astounding on the table. Yeah, I got I got to pick that up. That sounds so awesome. I all we talk about this all the time. I always love, we all love the, the little prize in the cereal box, the adventure <laughs> and. Yeah. You know, yeah, I, I agree. I, yeah, I thought it turned out uh, fantastic. And uh, it, I, it, it was probably also kind of an idea that they might, you might see in future releases, perhaps. I, I certainly yeah, hope so. Yeah. Because their, their maps are amazing. You can't uh, go wrong with the maps in, no. in any of this stuff, man. No. So awesome. That's great. What do you got? Are you work on anything right now, Tim? Uh, let me see here. What am I? What am I? What am I doing? I've got I've got some irons in the fire that obviously I can't really discuss. Yep, but if, yep. you're, uh, if you're talking about me personally, uh, we were uh, well. You were just talking about uh, Zine Quest coming up in, yeah, in yeah. February. Uh, there is a project that I've been kind of noodling around with. I've got some notes on it, and I'm going to make a push to try to get it out. Uh, and the the concept. Uh, is what if H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds was the great disaster that caused Mutant Crawl Classics? Uh, so, so the concept is Martian wow. Crawl Classics. Uh, and yes. what I'm planning on doing is kind of rewriting the history of Terra AD that the Martian invasion of, say, the 1950s, if you want to use the movie, the 1880s, yeah. if you want to use the book, whatever, uh, that the Martian invasion came destroyed the planet we never recovered the martians died off or did they uh <laughs> and then and then of course you know humanity and uh like the plantians <laughs> are some of the plantians are going to be uh like the red weed plantians yeah. uh mutations are caused due to the lingering effects of the black smoke that the martians used um that explains why there is all of this uh, futuristic weaponry. It's because it was being repurposed during the wars and all that stuff. Uh, so that's kind of something I've, I've been wanting to do. Um, and so I think I'll I'll push that forward uh, for Zine Quest. So I've got that. That going. sounds really, really cool. Thank you. Um, 
And also, uh, some of you, uh, if you've seen some of my older stuff that I've written for uh, the uh, Mutant Future, uh, yes. which is Goblinoid Games, uh, one project that I put together that, that people love, it's one of my best sellers even to this day, is One Year in the Savage Afterworld. And it's 52 micro-adventures. Each one is a page uh, with a start, beginning, finish, new monsters, and all that stuff. Uh, and the, the concept is that you could literally run an adventure. There's 52 of them, so run yep. one adventure every week for an entire year. So it's a oh, year's man. Of adventure. I'm currently in the middle of updating it for Mutant Crawl Classics. I've gotten a lot of requests uh, to have that updated for Mutant Crawl Classics. And I, so I'm rewriting, I'm restatting, I'm coming up with new monsters. Uh, the cover's already done. And so knock on wood. You'll see that early next year. All right. Thanks for sharing that with us. Accepted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you you, wait, you reminded me of something that uh, Diogo Nogueira was saying that, like, a lot of times he'll buy cover art even before he has the project, like, thought out. He'll yeah. just buy art, which makes it like that investment's like, okay. Now I got to make an adventure with it. So that, that reminded me of the Manimals thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's actually a good point because, um, I, I uh, Aaron Seidel did the artwork for that, and I, I'll, I'll unveil it at some point. Uh, but what I told him that I wanted, because obviously this is 52 separate adventures, I just didn't want to have yeah. a, a picture for one of these things. So I went to him and I said, I want uh, an, uh, kind of an homage to the classic Gamma World rules, where it's uh, uh, mutants standing on a hillside overlooking the ruins uh, they've done that like two or three different uh, uh, rule books and stuff like that. Uh, like the very first Gamma World, I think it was like a bunch of little Martian looking spacemen kind of guys with the yeah. ruins of the city behind them. Uh, and so they've done that a few times and said, I, I want that. I want ruins in the gotcha. background and I want general generic MCC mutants looking like they're getting ready to, to head on that nailed it he knocked it up so, so. so in one episode or well, in your life you've covered uh corn liquor infested zombies yes uh kaiju yes uh manimals and now yes. we're doing hg wells war of the worlds all sorts of different aliens you and i'm sure yes. oh, and we're not gonna have time we're gonna talk about this some other time but we talked about this right before the show your uh creepy comic conversions that's yes. all I'm going to say, because we don't have time. But look up Tim Snyder's Creepy Comic Conversions. If you're a monster kid like me, and you love Creep Show and Tales from the Crypt and all that, this guy took public domain horror comics and turned them into adventures. This <laughs> blew my mind when I read about this yesterday. I'm and, surprised that nobody's done it before, honestly. Oh, my God. You, we we got to talk about this, Mr. Snyderman. We got we got to we got to do some business because this is right up my apple tree, pal. That's I'd be I'd be yeah I'd be happy to 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 discuss that ad nauseum anytime you're available. Awesome. We're getting towards the end of the show already, but mm -hmm. I want to ask you this: We never forget about our inner twelve year old or our inner child, and make sure we're still taking care of them. So how about a little fuel for that fire, everybody? I want you to take a second. Take a breath. Take a sip of the Baja Blast, whatever you have in front of you. I'm going to ask you two things. What's your favorite holiday drink? And what was your favorite Christmas present or one of your favorite Christmas presents that you still think about fondly to this day? Hmm. Who would like to go first? Uh, I mean, I can go first. I already know. Go ahead, uh, Bri. You know, I'm a big eggnog guy. I like, uh, we, we talk, we do a lot of eggnog. There's a, a a nice one, uh, purity ice cream out of Ithaca, New York. Okay, it has like it's like fifteen dollars for like a, a like a quart. Ooh, yeah, I haven't tried it, but that's this is the year. Okay. My dad says it's the best because I I'm always uh well Burn Dairy is like the local dairy place. That's like what I always get, and I thought it was. So the you're best. a local. You're almost like a nog connoisseur. Kind of, a nog sewer. <laughs> A Naga sewer, if you will. <laughs> yeah. don't, put, don't put nutmeg in it. I'm not a nutmegger. Oh boy. Yeah, that's fighting words there. All right. <laughs> so anyway. we got the local the local, local uh, egg nogs. artisanal nog. I mean not artisanal. How about how about your one of your favorite presents? Oh, 
It's got to be the Sega CD. That's, oh, ooh, nice. The, the ooh, story. I you play Night Trap. Yeah, well, that's the one where I, I was opening it. Either that or Hero Quest, obviously. But yep. that was the one where I opened it before Christmas and dropped it and broke it. Remember? And then I had to pretend that it wasn't broken opening it. I love it. that story. Sewer yeah. Shark or Die, man. Yeah, oh. Sewer, Shark. <laughs> <laughs> Sewer Shark came with it. Dog meat. Yeah. Can't awesome. beat it. it was a Don't great game. Wiping you off the walls with handy wipes. Yes. Yeah. Oh. How about Santa Metal? Sentimental um, drinks. Um, I'm not a nog guy. Um, I'll go with um, okay. If we're going with alcoholic drink, uh, my grandpa, my dad. The first kind of taste that I had back when I was little is they would give us a little bit of apple schnapps at the holiday season. So yeah. So that was kind of if I think about something at Christmas that I would associate with that, it would probably be that. That'd be That'd be my drink. Uh, the inner 12-year-old, well, I can talk about 12 pretty good because I got everything that defined Dr. Metal kind of happened in those years. So one thing that was under the Christmas tree oh, was this thing, yeah. um, which was the gateway drug to all the stuff that we're doing now. Yep. And the other thing that was under the tree that year, besides all the G.I. Joes, yeah. <laughs> um was Iron Maiden somewhere in time, uh Van Halen Fair Warning, um, and I think rats out of the cellar. So so pretty good year for for me back then. That, that does sound Christmas. like a nice Christmas. Very good. Luscious. Oh man, uh well if I can't have the uh if I can't have the eggnog, um and we're not going nostalgic with something like Pepsi Spice, uh, <laughs> nutmeg style. Um, I'm going to have to fall back on my many, many years of bartending and uh, go with this. I make this awesome cranberry Moscow mule Ooh, for everybody yeah. here in the family. We have it at you know, family gatherings and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. It's awesome. It comes in the little brass cups. It's, it's, it's great. Um, but we drink those like all December. I'm, when I get off the show, I'm literally going to go have one. Nice. Um, yeah, they're they're awesome. Maybe I'll make uh, make a batch at TotalCon, and we can all uh, all right. We can all tip them back. But the um, way it snows there, it will be like Christmas. Yeah, so, yeah. totally yeah, appropriate. Folks, uh, if you're in the New cold. England area, TotalCon, uh, February twentieth, right around there. Sure, uh, we're all going to be there. The Neon Lord, Luscious Levi, Doctor Metal, Joey Royale, Tim DeShane, uh, Mike Curtis, a lot of great people are going to be hanging out. Ham bone, we're going to do it our thing. Meet the Dell cool. in person. Meet the, the Dell in person. Yeah, it's going to be great. <laughs> uh, Judge, Judge Snyderman, favorite drink of the season and your favorite Christmas present as a kid? Very, very easy. Um, okay, I got two parts for both parts. Uh, for the first part, I'm a huge eggnog fan. Yeah. To the point where I was thrilled to find out that the local grocery store up the street carries eggnog year round. So it is not unusual for me to mow the lawn and then quench my thirst with eggnog. I feel like the phlegm coming up just thinking it, about it. it. Oh, oh. Eggnog in the heat. It does oh, not God. quench your thirst. It smothers it. <laughs> oh, I love it. You're a good man, Snyder. So, so that's, that's the first part. Second okay. part is that I think I mentioned this before we started the show. I've been drinking uh, last yeah. year's vintage Mountain Dew Fruit Quake. That's right. Nice. The fruit cake flavored Mountain Dew from last year. I bought like three or four 12 packs and I've been nursing them all year. I'm down to my last three. I literally uncorked one just for this episode. Nice. Delicious, delicious egg, uh, fruit cake flavored beverage. Okay, as far as best gift, I've got I've got one that I think that Joey himself will approve. I think you'll all approve of, but I'll give you the one that that initially meant the most uh, was the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. I got an yeah, Atari when I was a kid, tough. played the hell out of it. I was yeah. Space Invaders, Berserk, all the classic arcade games, plus some of the more obscure carts that came out about that time. So I got a lot of use out of that. 
And uh, that kind of started, I was, co I collected uh, video games uh, yep. for years. So I, I had a huge Atari collection. Obviously, I've got the a main machine behind me. So let's just say that classic video games, I love to this day. Now then. Awesome. In the 70s, though, I got, yeah. I got a board game that I will be picking up a, a new copy just so I can bring it to Gary Cunningham. What is that? Mattel, here it is. Mattel's Slime Monster Game. Oh, I know this one. Yes, I know it is. One. It was a great board game. Mattel's Slime, uh, for those of you who grew up in the 70s, came in like a little plastic uh, trash can. It what? was cold. It was clammy. It was green. It got smelled into, awesome. Oh, it, it got into the carpets. Can't get fantastic. Out. Uh, awesome. You get the slime, you get the, the green slime regular, you get the purple slime with the worms, you yeah. get the slime that had like the eyeballs in, which I can never find in the stores. Yeah. Anyway, they had a board game where you had, uh, it was people walking around uh, this destroyed city and you had the slime monster and you would fill the chamber up with slime and it would drool out of its mouth. And this thing would move around on the board and at the slime dragged what your character and knocked it over you had to go back to the game so you're playing basically mousetrap which is slowly getting covered with green goo as you play yeah yeah drove my mom nuts my brother and i played this thing all the time and to win you got to the end and you got like a landmine and you got to put it underneath the slime monster and you got to push the plunger and he would blow up and slime oh, all yeah. over the table it's a fantastic <laughs> fantastic board game I'm hopping on eBay after. Yeah, this. I'm looking. I'm already on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, you can probably, cheap. you can, yeah, you can probably find like an incomplete set or it doesn't yeah. come with the instructions for like 60, 70 bucks. If you want one that's complete, it's going to cost you a bit more. You'll probably have to buy new slime. I can't oh, imagine yeah, slime after 50 or 60 years is anything you want to uncork. So the big but, thing, modern slime is not like it used to be. So I got uh, like, I got like the the muck man, right? Yeah. So oh, like mm -hmm. I put slime in it all the time. It never comes out the mouth anymore. Ben, oh, the beach, what's slime the deal? Slime. Oh, hard, yeah, oh, hard, oh. I forgot about hard. Yeah, Mangor Mountain. Yep, Mangor Mountain. That was yep. all that same. Had a very nice viscosity to it, mm -hmm. a nice tinge, and it also went well with eggnog. Well. <laughs> We have reached that time. Jesus, I could I could go on for like two hours with all you knuckleheads. I love you all so much. But Elaine has got to queue up the next show. So I wish you all happy holidays, whatever you celebrate. Make sure you have fun. Take care, Give a call to a friend who you haven't talked to in a while. Let them know that you love them. I love you all. You are all very special to me. And I can't wait to see you in the new year. If you love Weird Heroes of Public Access, they just released it on the Goodman Games site this afternoon. So pick up some stuff there. And uh, thank you very much. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy New Year and everything in between. I hope you have a great one with your family and friends. And remember, I love you just the way you are. Ciao, Paisans! Let's go.